Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Parisville Patel. Hey, Parisville, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm very, very well, and I'm excited to get into this topic. I, I spend a lot of time in the machine learning space, and so it's an honor to speak to someone who is such a guru in this area. Parisville is a partner with Radical Ventures, uh, where he works with visionary entrepreneurs using AI to transform traditional industries. Um, he is working with some amazing early stage businesses uh, as they step into and revolutionize the world that we are living in with machine learning. But before we get into that, Parisville, tell us a little bit about your incredible background and, and your career. Uh, thank you. It's, it's uh, exciting to be here. I appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with me. I, as you mentioned, I'm a partner here at Radical Ventures. Uh, I invest in early stage AI startups. Uh, always looking to talk to uh, amazing founders who are building uh, innovative things in, in the AI world. But before I got here, I, I'm originally an engineer by training. I was always uh, a math and science kid, loved those subjects, uh, ended up taking engineering as my major, uh, worked in, uh, studied electrical engineering, and then worked in, uh, in consulting uh, and a global asset manager called KKR. So during my career, before I moved to Radical, I worked with companies everywhere from uh, two people uh, starting a new business to 90 plus thousand global uh, uh, businesses. Uh, and I covered pretty much every uh, sector that is out there. So healthcare, financial services, industrial goods, energy, and so on and so forth. So that is essentially the broad base of experience that I bring to Radical and the founders that I work with, which is experience of working with companies across stages, across sectors, across geographies. Uh, and uh, in my role today, I invest in startups as well as I work with our portfolio companies, uh, yeah. helping them uh, grow their business. Yeah, so let's get into that in, in, a, in a little bit. The, the interesting thing I find is that I know that the University in Toronto has been actually a hotbed for machine learning research um, for, can I say, the last 50 years? Uh, but uh, the reality is that there's quite a bit of the work, commercial world of AI that we're moving into that came from Toronto. And so it's quite exciting to see that you're based there and I completely see your background making complete sense. Tell me a little bit more about what's happening right now in the early stage AI world of Radical Ventures. Yeah, so we are, uh, we look at hundreds of startups every month uh, building interesting products uh, and, and, and growing their companies solving real problems for individuals and businesses. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Toronto is a great place to be, uh, to do something like this. So, uh, over the last many decades, a lot of fundamental innovation in the world of AI happened here in Toronto, the modern AI revolution. So now we obviously hear about AI on a daily basis. That started uh, pretty much exactly 10 years ago when a group of students here at University of Toronto cracked this uh, global competition called ImageNet. Uh, so that has led to this modern revolution of using deep learning to solve a lot of problems uh, for businesses and for individuals. Uh, and uh, we are fortunate here to be, to be here in Toronto working with these startups. Uh, we work across startups uh, in US and Canada. Uh, obviously Toronto, Montreal, Edmonton are, are great uh, centers of AI activity here in Canada, but the hotbeds of activity in the US continue to, to remain so. Now, I'd be curious uh, to get your, your take on this. I, you know, certainly, we hear a lot about machine learning and the utilization of AI across every aspect of the enterprise and commercial world, but also literally our lives. Um, where are we in this whole process? What, what, what gets you excited right now? Yeah, so I, I still think we are in the early innings of the AI revolution here. Uh, as I said, even though the research has been going on for many decades, uh, the adoption has been uh, uh, accelerating in the last 10 years. Uh, and even in that time frame, a lot of the early work was focused on 
still kind of, I would call research driven AI, where researchers are still kind of figuring out how to commercialize and productize their, their research. And from that point on, we are now transitioning to what I call applied AI, where we are ap applying these technologies and making uh, products that solve uh, some of these real world problems. I feel in another five years or so, we'll transition to this third phase uh, that I call ambient AI, where uh, every piece of software that we interact with will have some sort of an intelligent component built into the software. There will be an AI or machine learning component into the software. So as we talked about software eating the world over the last decade, I think the next decade will be about AI embedding itself in every piece of software and, and really becoming an uh, ambient technology that all of us interact with on a, on a daily, uh, daily basis in both our individual lives as well as our, our work lives. That's great. And I mean, I'm going to shift gears a little bit here because the last couple of years have been uh, a moment where uh, perhaps old models fell and new models appeared. And there was perhaps, uh, a, a, I, I used to joke quite a bit that this seemed to be the moment where the person on every board of any big company that was saying no to things like AI suddenly suddenly got outvoted. <laughs> um, and I, so I'd just be curious to hear how you see the last couple of years reshaping or maybe accelerating where we're going. Yeah, I think the, the last uh, three years or so have been a roller coaster ride for all of us, or certainly as individuals as we've dealt with pandemics and, uh, uh, and, and now a war. Uh, but uh, from a business perspective also, it has been uh, we've seen accelerating adoption of AI. So starting with the pandemic itself, the vaccines that we all uh, got a lot of benefit from over the last year, AI has played a major role in developing those vaccines. We've seen uh, issues with supply chains and AI is now helping uh, improve our supply chains, make, them, make us understand them better and drive automation and resiliency into our supply chains. Uh, and as we think about businesses and uh, the war for talent, the uh, challenge for uh, increasing productivity in our businesses, AI and automation is also helping us improve productivity, both for uh, the knowledge worker, uh, as well as, uh, as the workers who, who make, uh, make the things that we use on a daily basis. I'm going to ask you kind of an interesting one here, which is the topic of trust. I, I find that when we talk about machine learning, it, we, we look at these tools and we, we talk about the efficiencies, we talk about the ability to take on complex issues, to sort, to process more effectively. And yet, a lot of the effective rollout of AI will depend on humans' ability to trust. Where, where are we on that pathway? Uh, I think I think we are still figuring it out. Uh, honestly, uh, we are uh, figuring it out. Uh, let me again start with kind of companies first. There are companies uh, who still don't trust that AI can help uh, uh, their business in a meaningful way. And as you were mentioning, some of those board members are voted out, but some some management teams are still kind of dealing with that. There are others who might have tried to do something, and they were burnt because uh, the foundational kind of technology that's needed to actually make these things work wasn't ready. Uh, and, and that's why they are a little bit more skeptical of making it work. Uh, and then there are those who are adopting it now, but are worried about what the uh, after effects or, or other second order uh, effects could be. And that's true of, of us uh, as individuals too. When we use these technologies, we are worried about privacy, we are worried about uh, bias and, and so on and so forth. Uh, there is certainly like any other technology, there's certainly chance for uh, fraud and abuse and, and bias in uh, AI too. Uh, I, as an investor, and we as a firm, uh, really keep AI ethics and, and the ethical use of AI and the responsible use of the technology in, in the forefront of how we invest. And that goes from uh, working with the right set of founders, investing in the companies that are thinking about uh, these technologies in the right way, and then also providing a layer of governance and support to our companies to make sure that uh, AI is developed ethically and, and implemented ethically so that we don't run into some of the challenges that we hear about uh, on a daily basis over the last few years. Yeah, I mean, we, we hear about a lot of those topics and certainly I think we see examples of things improving, but uh, when things go wrong, it's, uh, it's kind of like a plane crash. Everyone, everyone panics. So really, I, I think what was that cl classic, you know, Bill Gates thing, which is like, 
Uh, an airline, basically, um, if it, one plane crashes, they shut down the whole airline. <laughs> That's kind of like AI right now. Whereas like, uh, you know, when windows would crash every five minutes, it was, it was okay somehow. So um, it's really interesting time. And, and just putting on your early stage VC hat, and here we are in 2022, we're in a market where the financial dynamics of the marketplace have, have shifted. How is that changing your approach as, a, as an early stage investor? Yeah, I would answer that in, in, in two ways. One is we are investing in really early stage businesses that are going to build their businesses over a five or 10 year time frame. So yes, while the markets are challenging right now, we still believe in the potential of AI and we still believe in the, in the long-term tailwinds and trends uh, around AI. So we're still looking uh, to invest in founders. We're continuing to invest uh, in, in founders on a regular basis. Uh, the second uh, part to this is that companies that we've invested in, in the past that are now kind of navigating this transition. And that is where we can be uh, supporters and partners to our uh, businesses and, uh, and the founders there and helping them navigate this turbulence so that they can come out uh, on the other side uh, in a strong position and uh, continue uh, on, the, on the mission that, uh, that they had when they started the business. Right, so is it fair to say basically you're looking at companies where the the exit or the the next round is a couple years out so therefore you know this is really kind of getting them going keep keeping them building uh so that we're ready when when things improve yeah in, in most cases when we invest in companies they the next funding round might be 18 24 months out um so that's that's definitely the case where there is a little bit of time to kind of build the product get to the next uh milestone and then go on out, go out and raise the next round of funding. Excellent. Well, I mean, Parisville, the 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 we are in an, uh, an interesting moment. We're talking about probably, I'd say, one of the two or three most important topics that are are defining our world for the next couple of decades, for sure. Um, if someone wanted to reach you and learn more about what you're doing, where where's the best place to get in touch with you? Uh, I'm available on LinkedIn and Twitter, and and uh, they can just uh, find me uh, at either of those places. My uh, handle is Parasil at Twitter, and and uh, I have the fortune of having uh, fortune or the fortune of having a unique name, so you'll be uh, able to find me easily on LinkedIn too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Parasville, it's been amazing talking to you about the early stage AI space. Uh, we've been speaking with Parasville Patel. He is a partner at Radical Ventures, which is a leading early st stage AI VC based in Toronto. We've been talking about the dynamics of the marketplace. Um, I would say that uh, based on what we're hearing, Parisville saying if you're if you're working on machine learning and you're building something, keep on keeping on. Uh, this is a, a world that's shaping, uh, and even even the dynamics of maybe the immediate term financing world is tough. Uh, keep on keeping on because there's a huge opportunity here, and this is going to be a keystone for the next phase of of growth. Parisville, thank you so much for being on on Cage today, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Looking forward Cheers. to that. Bye.